Hello and welcome. My name is Rai, and I grew up on a farm like some of you here in Hadley. I am part of the eighth generation at Barstow's Longview Farm. The white house you see in the background of this photo was the house I grew up in. Being part of a family of farmers, I took an interest growing up learning about where my food was coming from and agricultural practices in general. Today, I want to talk to you about a subject that I stumbled upon in that curiosity. That subject affects the lives of every single one of us daily, and yet is often overlooked and even unheard of. That topic is the environmental impact of livestock production, particularly in terms of methane emissions. The ranching and livestock sector is a major global market. Just in the US, ranchers and farmers grossed over $258 billion in 2022, according to the USDA. That's more than the entire US automobile market made in the past three years combined. Livestock are one of the most essential sources of food and nutrition. The livestock production of cows specifically gives us a wide array of valuable resources like meat and dairy products, as well as other. Beef and dairy products, as pictured here, are staples to diets worldwide. On top of this, they have an important role in the traditions of many groups of people. With this in mind, there is no surprise that there are more than 1.5 billion cows worldwide, with countries like Uruguay and New Zealand having more cows than people. But all this livestock production produces 14.5% of the global greenhouse gas emissions, according to PBS NewsHour. The majority of that number comes from methane, which is a naturally occurring byproduct of how some livestock process their food. Now, what is methane gas? Methane gas is a potent greenhouse gas that plays a significant role in the Earth's climate system. Methane has a shorter atmospheric lifespan than carbon dioxide, its greenhouse friend. Methane gas is also 28 times more effective than carbon dioxide at trapping heat in our atmosphere, according to the IEA. Like many other greenhouse gases, however, Methane is a naturally occurring organic compound. Methane has existed in our atmosphere for far longer than humans have been on this planet. While methane is responsible for around 30% of the rise in global temperatures, according to the IEA, that does not mean that we should reduce our methane emissions to zero. It is both impractical and unhealthy for the environment to do so. However, reducing our methane emissions, given how potent it is, is a crucial step in addressing climate change. Rising global temperatures will lead to many other global problems, such as melting glacial masses, stronger storms, unpredictable weather patterns, and flooding coastal cities. A global effort to mitigate methane emissions is a crucial step in addressing this problem. So why cows? Cows go through a step in their digestive process called enteric fermentation. During enteric fermentation, microbes in the digestive tract decompose and ferment food consumed by the animal, producing methane gas as a byproduct. The me that methane gas is released from the cow into the atmosphere. A single cow produces between 154 and 264 pounds of methane gas in a year. That methane rises, traps heat in the atmosphere, and makes the ground level temperatures higher. Higher ground level temperatures have a strong impact on the health of these livestock. Cows that live in warmer temperatures have more active digestive systems and live longer, producing an even greater amount of methane. What that means is that global temperatures will continue to rise. Methane emissions will go up as well, creating a negative feedback loop. So how do we reduce methane emissions with, from cows without sacrificing our beloved ice cream making friends? Well, one possible solution is using genetic modification technology known as CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR is a way to modify the genome of a living organism in order to selectively add or remove desirable or undesirable traits. Think of CRISPR as the grammarly of the genome. CRISPR is a tool that allows the user to select and delete specific genes and sequences. 
CRISPR can also insert new genes into very specific places. One of these genes we could edit with CRISPR could attempt to reduce the accumulation of methane in cows. However, as of right now, there's very little scientific evidence to suggest that this is possible. Numerous studies are currently being conducted to explore the possibility of such a modification, but as of right now, humans are unable to do so. Furthermore, the ethical ramifications of such a modification techniques are debatable at best. It should, be, should it be implemented, CRISPR modded cows are likely to draw fire from animal rights activists, anti-GMO organizations, and these animals pose a lot of risks to the environment. Many scientists think that genetically modified animals pose a greater risk of hosting diseases that cross between animals and humans. These animals are also at a greater risk for disability. Considering these factors, it might be a good idea to look into other options. A far less invasive option is anaerobic digestion. This is a diagram of an anaerobic digester. This digester takes cow's manure with all the methane and turns it into energy, heat, and leftovers can be turned into bedding, fertilizer, and compost. There are 343 digesters nationwide as of 2023, according to the EPA. And an 1,800 cow dairy farm in Maine is projected to produce about 8,000 megawatt hours of electricity for the local grid a year. That is about 8 billion kilowatts. For reference, 8 billion kilowatts have the power to power 730 homes yearly. This is a renewable source of energy that has a positive impact on the environment, the community, the surrounding the farm, while significantly improving the methane emissions the farm is giving off into the atmosphere. Now you're probably thinking, that's a pretty cool piece of technology. What's the catch? The problem with anaerobic digestion is that anaerobic digestion can be extraordinarily expensive. According to the APA, the cost of anaerobic digestion ranges from $400,000 to $5 million. That's a lot of money. However, there are plenty of organizations that provide significant funding assistance for farms looking to produce electricity for their communities. If that's still too expensive, then farms can look into more efficient ways to run their businesses like robotic milkers to reduce the amount of cows that they need and meet the needs of the population that they serve. Now, I know that not everyone here owns a dairy farm. Not everyone here has the ability to build an anaerobic digester, even if they do have a dairy farm. And not even everyone in this room probably consumes dairy products. Many people, however, do. As a dairy product consumer, you have a responsibility, a responsibility to purchase from farms and businesses that are doing something about their effect on climate change. If it wasn't for you, the consumer, the producers would not produce at the rate in which they do, and we would not be in this position. There are nearly 6.5 billion people who consume dairy products worldwide. Let me ask you a few questions. Raise your hand if you ate a dairy product today. Keep it raised if you know what company or brand produced that dairy product. Okay. Now keep that raised if you know what farm supplied to that company. And finally, keep it raised if you check the practices of that farm. I'd like you to take a look around the room. Considering that none of you have your hands up, I would say we need a change. We need more informed consumers like you. Many people like to blame farmers for these emissions but we allow corporations to continue to practice inefficient and harmful practices of production with our mindless purchasing habits. After this talk, I hope you'll go out and support farms to do their best to follow research and make the effort for a greener future. Climate change and methane emissions are our problem, and we need to support these, those who are trying to slow down and educate our friends and family on how they too can slow the release of methane emissions. Thank you.